Welcome to Kitty Unfiltered. My name is Kitty, and this is Use It and Lose It, the 2019 Pan That Palette series. And since I, much like Jenna Marbles, suffer from the too much gene, instead of doing one palette, I'm doing three. Why? Because apparently I hate myself. Now when I say I'm doing three, I don't mean that I completely plan to finish three palettes. I'm going to have one palette that is my main Pan That Palette palette, and then I will have two supplementary palettes to go along with my Pan That Palette palette to help fill out the colors a little. Take a shot for every time I say palette. Since I was inspired by the YouTube channel and the Pan That Palette pioneer, Amber F, I am going to start with my Naked Palette. As you can see, it is hardly touched, as is most of the makeup that I own. Now, since this is kind of a I don't want to say boring palette, but I just started getting into colors about two months ago, and I love it. It's one of those things where I look extra forward to doing my makeup every day because I want to play with colors and see what I can make happen, and I've never felt that way before. This is just within the past couple months. So since this has pretty much no color to it, it's just a, well, it's a naked palette, so it's naked, uh, I will have two supplementary palettes. Now, the thing is, I am a seasonal employee at Ulta, so on the days that I work, I have to wear makeup that, well, you don't have to, but it's highly suggested, obviously. I mean, they didn't even suggest it to me. It's just common sense. If you work at a place that sells products that you can use yourself, you should probably be using them yourself. So, since the Naked palette is still for sale online at Ulta, I'm still going to use this palette. And then on work days, whenever I need extra colors or extra shadows to fill it out, especially since there's only two mattes in there, so they're going to go pretty quickly. Uh, I am going to use the original Lorac palette. And this also is still sold at Ulta, and as you can see, it's also neutral colors, but I have a whole row of mattes, and then I have some shimmers and a couple different colors to go with it. So on work days, when I'm wearing the Naked palette, I will be supplementing it with the Lorac Pro palette, if needed. You know, there are days I'll wear this by myself, but for days when I need something extra, the, ooh, this way, original Lorac Pro is what it's going to be. Now for my personal uh, Pan That palette, uh, the colors I'm going to be using, and I do stress colors uh, along with the Naked palette, is the Alice Through the Looking Glass palette from Urban Decay. It's one of their books of shadows. Here are the colors. And as you can see, each of them is divided into a character that goes down. But why I'm doing this one for my personal Pan That palette to supplement the Naked palette as needed is because that also came with five lipsticks, and each of these lipsticks coordinates with one of those quads in there and one of the characters, and obviously these lipsticks are getting older. They're going to start going bad real soon, so I need to get these used up. So the first column is Alice. The second column is Mad Hatter. The third column is Marana. The fourth column is Erasabeth. And the fifth column is time. So on my personal makeup days, I will be project panning this along with the Naked palette so I can use up these lipsticks. So that's the introduction to my Pan That palette. And now that my skincare has had time to soak in, let's start the get ready with me. Okay, to start with, there are only two mattes in this palette. They are Naked, which is right, yeah, and Buck, which is right, yeah. I have a shadow there. My lighting sucks. Sorry, just working with what I got. But anyway, since there's only two matte shadows, they will be used in every look. And I think what I'm gonna do is take Naked, the light one, and I will kind of put that here on the hood of my eye, that spot of skin that's like right over the crease. And then I will take Buck, the darker one, and actually work it into the crease, and then kind of give my outer V a little shape. And I'm gonna play with that for a couple days and see how that works, but I think that's gonna be the base of every look. And then uh, whatever colors that I put in on top of that are whatever's on top of that for the day. But I think that's going to be what I use every single day to start this palette to kind of sketch everything out and get just a good base going. I have already primed my eyes with the Urban Decay Anti-Aging Primer Potion. And I've given that a few minutes to settle down and get tacky. Now today, I'm not going to set the primer potion. I'm going to go right in with the colors and see what happens. That could be dangerous. Because I do have work this afternoon, so 
it gets really bad and nothing wants to blend, then I will just have to take off my eye makeup and redo it. But hopefully I can get something somewhat good without setting the primer first to see how it performs that way. Okay, so I'm going to start with Naked on the Sephora Pro Featherweight Crease number 38 and work that onto the hood of my eye. Now I am battling a bit of weepy eye again today, so I do have a little tissue handy. I may be dabbing my eye frequently throughout this application. Okay, that shadow definitely sticks to the primer. I may have made a mistake. We shall see. Went on a little smoother on this eye. Maybe just the other side I got a little more and it hadn't dried down as much as this one. It's still sticking a little, but not as bad as it did on the other eye. It's almost my skin tone with a little bit of shadow, so it really blends into it. So I guess that's a good transition color, a good base color, because you can barely see it. We'll see how that plays out when I get to putting on color. Next, I'll be working Buck into the crease with a Sephora pointed crease brush. And then blending everything out with the MAC 224S. I'm kind of patting that product into place first and then going in and blending it out. It's definitely sticking to the primer potion. So I think next time I am going to be setting the primer potion before I actually start putting on shadows. It's taking a lot of blending since I didn't set the primer potion down, but it is all blending out nicely. It's just taking a little extra effort. Still not enjoying the synthetic MAC brushes. I'm glad I have extra time to get ready today. The good news, even though this palette is old, this book is still very pigmented because I don't put very much on the brush and then I tap it off rather vigorously and I don't have to go back in for product for this color. There's enough on the brush that I can do the entire crease and kind of structured outer V area without dipping back in. So that's good because a lot of times with older palettes people say they have problems with shadows losing their pigment. But at least for the color Buck, not having that issue. I don't even know how old this palette is. I might have got it when it first came out. I know mine had the double-ended eyeliner in it, and apparently the newer versions had a brush instead of the eyeliner, so... Whenever they switched from double-ended eyeliner over to brush, my palette's older than that. But I don't know how much older. The left eye seemed to blend out quicker than the right eye, but then again, since I did the right eye first, maybe I just knew more what to expect with the left eye, so... Looks like I had a little more product on the right eye, too, so that might have accounted for the time, but I don't know if I want to risk going in and trying to make the left eye darker right now, because I'm afraid I'll go overboard and then nothing will match. <sighs> yeah, I'm gonna do a touch more on the left eye. Wish me luck. And finally, I'm going to take a Sephora fluffy crease brush to buff the edges a bit. It's blending out fairly nicely for not having set the base beforehand. And again, because I hate myself, I am going to just jump in the deep end and work creep into my outer V with the Morphe M506. Now I'm heavy handed, so this could easily go horribly horribly wrong. Oh, there's still color there even after that. Okay, now that I kind of have that sketched where I want it, I'm going to attempt to blend it out with my Sephora pointed crease brush. It's not too bad. It definitely could have gone a lot worse. Still a lot of pigment for being ancient. I'm still experimenting with getting the shape of my outer V. It always looks different on camera than it does in real life. Or I should say that it does in my mirror, so I never know which one I should be working off of for the final look. I don't know which one other people see when they look at me. Do they see the camera version or the mirror version? So it's very hard to decide on a shape. Going back into my pointed crease brush to blend that out, and I did wipe it off first. That way, I wouldn't get any extra traces of black that might still be on there from the other eye. And now going back in with my Sephora fluffy crease brush to blend the edges. I'm not working in swirls, I'm just doing a windshield wiper motion because I don't want to move the stuff any further up or down my eye, I just want to blend the line. You can definitely see a little weepy eye gap there, but maybe I can fix that later. You know what, it's gonna bother me, I'm gonna try to fix it now, and then I'm gonna mess everything up because that's what I do. Because I'm slightly OCD and I can't leave a spot undone. 
Okay, I debated for a few minutes, but I think I'm going to attempt a cut crease. I'll be using the Vintage Cosmetics Company Step one for the money brush and Maybelline's Instant Age Rewind Dark Circle Eraser in light. Oh my, that's a lot of hood to cover. Could be why I've never done this before. Dang, my lid is so hooded it covered up almost all of the other color. Not too bad for my first ever attempt. I'm not going to have that nice crisp line that other YouTubers have, but I would have to go to the bathroom mirror to do that because I would have to hold my eye still or hold my eyelid since I'm saggy. So I'd have to use one hand to hold the eyelid and the other one to put on the concealer. So I would have to do that in front of the bathroom mirror. But since today's the first time I've ever done this full eye thing, I'm just going to take what I have as a win. It's a little weird on the outside corner, but whatever. I'll get it worked out. Ugh, now I have to make them match. Screw it. Good enough. Okay, I went in with my finger and kind of tapped out the edges of that concealer to make it match a little more and to smooth it out a bit more. And I think I'm just going to do an all over lid in gunmetal. I'll be putting that on with the MAC 217S. Oh baby, she may be old, but she's still got the pigment. I just kind of patted that color on and now I'm using the edge of the brush to smooth out the edge. You can still see the concealer a bit on the edges, so I may have to go back in with Buck or Naked to smooth that out a little, but it's on there and it feels like it's not going to go anywhere. I'm getting very little fallout with these shadows too. Which I don't know if fallout amounts change as palettes age, but this one is doing fine. Okay, now I'm going to go back in with the Sephora Pro Featherweight Crease and Naked. Just like I did when I started this mess and try to smooth out that line and hide the concealer a little better. Okay, I'm going to need to brighten that up a little, so I'm going to be using Virgin on the inner corner. And I'm going in with a Morphe M507. I'm just going to use that same Pro Featherweight Crease Brush in 38 to blend that out a little. Okay, I'm going to leave the eyeshadow there for now and move on. After I finished the eyeshadow, I went in with some cornflower water to clean up the edges and catch any fallout. And fortunately, there wasn't any. Then I applied a small layer of the It Bye Bye Under Eye Eye Cream. For primer, I used the Hourglass Veil Mineral Primer. And then for an under eye primer, I used the Smashbox Photo Finish Hydrating Under Eye Primer. And now that that's had time to set in, it's on to the face. I'm going to start off by attempting to use the Becca Under Eye Brightening Corrector with a Real Techniques Deluxe Crease Brush. Okay, so the weather today is really crappy. I am snowed in from work, so for the rest of my face, I get to use whatever products I want. So I'm just going to sit here and play with other makeup that I wouldn't have got to wear today. So I am going to try playing with the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Foundation in the shade number four. And I'll just be working that onto the skin with a damp beauty blender. I keep adjusting the position of my ring light and no matter what I do, I have a shadow. I can't move the ring light any closer or even on the lowest setting, it'll white me out, but I can't move the camera any further away because I don't have a fancy remote or anything so I wouldn't be able to zoom in and out as needed without having to get up, walk over to the ring light, and zoom. Okay, so I got the light to where I can see myself better in the mirror but I still can't get rid of this shadow thing and I don't, I don't know if it's the primer I used or what but I don't like the way this foundation maybe it's because I use the sponge I don't really like the way it sets like it's sitting on like my nose in here it's not really blending in so but then again I'm new to make it I could have totally messed something up I don't know what this what it normally looks like compared to other foundations on my skin uh, so we're just gonna leave it as is and move on to concealer I have the NARS radiant creamy concealer I have two colors. I have, I think it's Canelli and Vanilla. Uh, Canelli is a little more yellow, a little warmer. Or is yellow warmer or pink warmer? I don't know. It looks more orangey, I guess. Whatever. And then the other one is the Vanilla is just a basic light one. I don't know 
which one I should use. You know what, let's start with vanilla. It's the light one, because it's always easier to go darker than it is to go lighter, so we'll start off going lighter. And uh, if I need more color, then I'll use the other one. And then back in with that same Dampen Beauty Blender I used for the foundation to blend that out a bit. I'm sure that anyone watching this right now is probably screaming, that's not right, that's not how you do that. No wonder your makeup always looks like crap. But I'm learning. You only learn by trying and failing and then trying again. It's not too bad. I don't know what it's supposed to look like, but that's not too bad. I'm gonna take the darker one and do a little extra coverage around my nose. I'm gonna take that lighter one again and try the whole highlighting with concealer thing. I don't know if it's gonna work for me. We shall see. And if you hear a weird fan noise in the background, cause my heater's on at my feet. And if you hear random rumblings, cause my puppy and my kitten are playing. Ugh. I've got to get better lighting. Good enough. Next. And I'm just taking a bit of the Becca Hydra Mist Sit and Refresh Powder on that same damp beauty blender and just setting right under my eyes and then I will be moving on to more cream products on the face. Not baking, just setting. For cream bronzer, I'm going to be using Chanel's Soletain de Chanel and I'll be putting that on with a Real Techniques buffing brush. For my cream contour, I'm going to be going into the Laura Mercier Flawless Contouring Palette and using a mixture of contour number one and contour deep number three. And I'll be using a Real Techniques Duo Fiber Contour Brush. My forehead and my nose are both small enough the way they are and neither one of them is misshapen, so I don't bother contouring either one of them. But I... Sorry, I'm having to pause and yell at a puppy for barking out the window. Yeah, I'm talking about you. But any anyway, what I was saying was um, I really only need to contour under my cheekbone and then try to contour some of this double chin away. I'm not the best at it and this lighting is not helping. And then just blending that out with any of the foundation left on my beauty blender. For cream blush, I'm going to be using Max Casual Color Lip and cheek color in Keep It Loose and I'm putting that onto my cheeks with the Real Techniques Stippling Brush. This thing is ancient, still smells good, still wears good, still use it. I generally get enough product on my brush with one dip. I just kind of pat back and forth between both cheeks until I have it blended out. I'm not really using any of the cream products for color or structure. I'm just kind of using them both to do a little natural base before I go on with powder products. For highlighter, I'm just going to go back into that Laura Mercier Flawless Contouring Palette and using my finger, put highlight number one on my cheekbones and Cupid's bow. Okay, then I'm going to attempt to do something with my brows. I'll be starting with the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Primer, then using Benefits Precisely My Brow Pencil in the shade 3. Okay, now I'm going to be setting my face with that same powder I used under my eyes. It's the Becca Hydra Mist Set and Refresh Powder. And I'll just be using a standard Sephora powder brush to do that. And if you want to know how well this thing cools, I just accidentally powdered my pants. And yes, I can actually feel it through my jeans. That one spot on the top of my knee feels slightly damp and cooler than the rest of me. Which is not a fun feeling when it's snowing outside. Kind of initially just stamp that into the skin and then I'll go back and blend out after it kind of stamped it all over the face. So for bronzer, highlight, and contour, I'm just going to go into the Too Faced Coco Contour Chiseled to Perfection Face Contouring and Highlighting Kit in Light to Medium. I'll attempt to use the contour bookie brush that comes in it with Dark Coco for bronzing. And then for contouring and highlighting, I will be using the double-ended Sephora 204 brush. I'll be contouring with medium cocoa and highlighting with light cocoa. And then I'll be using the Sephora Pro Featherweight Blending number 93 to dust on a little sparkle with pop of light. For blush, I'm just going to grab Milani's Tea Rose because it's in front of me. I'm going to put that on with a Sonia Kashuk. And my blush just fell out of the pan, so this is a fun day. I'm having to hurry now because my battery's about ready to die. I always take my blush up to kind of on top of my temples. 
And one last thing really quick before the battery dies, I'm just going to take some Herbivore Rose Hibiscus Coconut Water Hydrating Face Mist. Bring a little life back to the skin after all of that powder. And that's it! What originally was a Get Ready With Me Pan That Palette 2019 video while well, I was getting ready to go to work at Ulta turned into a me just playing with makeup video because I'm snowed in and I can't go to work and they might even be closing the store early at this point. Uh, but before my battery dies, I'm just going to leave it here. I'm not going to bother with eyeliner and mascara because honestly, if I'm snowed in all day, I'll probably just wash this off and then try playing with some other products. But this is how it ended up. Yeah, it's kind of heavy handed, but one, I'm a heavy handed person and two, it always fades after the first hour anyway, so generally it's faded down to an acceptable level by the time I leave the house. This is uh, this is finished. This is my first time really trying a majority of those products. First time ever doing a pewter lid, so I, mean, I guess it was okay. So thank you for checking out my inaugural Pan That palette in my Use It and Lose It umbrella of product videos. And I'll see you next time. Bye!